<sighs> Hello, this is Heavy Thrash of the Nasty Metal Productions uh, channel of YouTube. Okay, this uh, topic uh, today is about tank versus tank. How can, can I start this? Let me first get this out of the way. I've been a fan of tank ever since 2009, since discovering that, uh, actually I kind of found out about them around eight, 2000, late to 2008, and I thought, I, I dug, I didn't, it wasn't bad, it was pretty much through us, the song Honor and Blood, uh, but I thought it was, it was good. So, to 2009, started listening to more of them, 2010, obtaining the Phil Pounds of Hades box set, which pretty much uh, features most of our classic albums from the new wave of British heavy metal era, which was the era that they broke out of, or sort of, or apart, whatever, and where, how, how you want to look at it. So let me show off a few ones, uh, some recognizable titles, such as this one, the eponymous debut of Fifth Hounds of Hades, produced by Fast Eddie Clark, um, ex-guitar player of Motorhead, um, then followed up by Power of the Hunter in the same year, this time being produced by Nigel Gray, classic album as well, such as a little, little more melodic, but, you know, little, still classic tank, uh, This Means War, which brought in the fourth guitar player, Mick Tucker. We're gonna uh, get to him in a minute. And then, Honor and Blood which saw the debut of not of Cliff Evans, who we're also going to get into in a minute. So, after On and Blood, they released a Tank uh, 87 album, and after that, they had, you know, split up. And then somewhere in the 90s, uh, they decided to get back together and did the Wackenfest in Germany, all that. And then in 2002, releasing their their first albums, first studio album since then, which was get it out, still at war. It's a good tank album, honestly. This one uh, features Bruce Bisland. Drummer for uh, Wildfire, and uh, I think also White Spirit. I know Mick Tucker was from White Spirit, another new wave of British heavy metal band. Uh, can't remember as much of her for one. No, actually, Bruce Bisland was Weapon, if I am definitely correct on that. Another one. Probably some of you remember Weapon for being featured on Lars Ulrich's uh, new 79. New Wave of British Heavy Metal, 79, Revisited. So, after Still at War, years gone by and it's 2007. Apparently, I guess people find out that uh, Algie Ward has left Tank. As though we thought. Or people thought. Because I wasn't um, aware of any of this when I was finding about Tank. That, go, that goes by, and then in 2010, we find out a new, new information from the Tank Camp comes out that they're releasing a new album with new vocalist Doogie White, mo mostly known for uh, singing for Richie Blackmore and Rain and the Rainbow in 95 on that album. Uh, so he uh, takes over Algie's spot. They released the album War Machine. I heard a bit. It was good. It's not, uh, not not what I expect from Tank. It's a little more, almost close to like Saxon or something, and not uh, not that punk sort of edge or you know that that that, that they've had uh, on those early albums. Even the the more albums such as Honor and Blood and This Means War kind of had a bit of you know the. Not, not so much a punk age, but it was still there, it was still there, it was still Tank. 
and that's not what was present on here. And Doogie White didn't have a vocals such as Algie Ward. It was more like Biff Byford of Saxon. As well. So more Saxon comparisons. Well, then in 2012, they released another one with, with Doogie White on vocals called War Nation. Pretty much uh, just, just the same as uh, War Machine. Same us. Uh, same everything, even though it was... What else can I say about that one? It was just the same. <laughs> but... Then in 2013, Algy Ward steps out of the shadow, releases... Breath of the Pit. This is where I start to find out that there's actually was a feud between Mick Tucker and um, Cliff Evans. The two of them feuding with Algie Ward. And there's pretty much a song that actually is targeted at them. It's called Crawl Back Into Your Hole. Pretty much he said in the lyrics, he says that how, his, how they stole his band. How they pretty much hijacked his, his band that he formed in 1982. And then just and Mick Tucker and Cliff Evans were not part of the original lineup. It was let me find their names on here. Shoot. There we go. Mark Brabs, Algie Ward, and Peter Brabs. The Brabs brothers were the original lineup. So, how much more credibility gets added for them to say that, that they own the name the Tank? Because they weren't part of the original lineup. Honestly, this adds to, to them being sort of like idiots or kind of almost douchebags in a way. So, in 2013, while on the uh, MA Metal Archives, they pretty much um, put Breath of Pit in the same album uh, discography as the as the Tanks albums. So later on uh, down the month, I guess even next year, this is where I start. They I go in to look up Tank, and all of a sudden I three D three different Tanks. One of them saying that, that, the, that the band that released Still at War was the original Tank, but the two others are just different forms of Tank. Honestly, give me an indications that there's two Tanks. Honestly, it's become another case of Queensryche versus Queensryche. If anyone remembers that, that was the whole bullshit with Jeff Tate and the other members. I thought that uh, that was stupid. Everyone knows that that was stupid because that bald ass motherfucker did, uh, decided that he had to own the, the name uh, to a band that he wasn't. He didn't come in very early. And honestly, it's become another case of that. And I don't know how, how, how much um, uh, us fans are going to take. And so. We then now get, uh, get another word from, uh, from the Cliff Evans uh, McTucker camp saying that Doogie White is now left. They now get new vocalist, another one, to uh, ex Dragon Force uh, vocalist. Honestly, I kind of thought that was pretty much the end for them because while I was digging a little bit of the Doogie White stuff, I'm not a fan of Dragon Force. Ne never cared for them. I thought that they're a pretty much a lousy power metal band. And I don't know if I, if I can really can call that power metal. That uh, that to me have always been called flower metal because it's like I don't when I think of power metal, I think of like m masculine sort of like testosterone filled riffs and very high octane vocals and such and not, uh, not something that I, that I can practically can feel whim whimsical through a fucking flower field. I don't th think of that. that uh, that's not power metal to me. And this is not about power metal, this is about fucking tank. Um, so, I hear that. 
Sure enough, here kind of, on Facebook, here kind of comes a bunch of backlash from, from diehard fans, and this is where, where I think Mick Tucker and Cliff Evans are a bunch of douchebags, is because of they made the side to block their accounts from ever commenting on their pages, or whatever. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? You're gonna treat your fans with that type of hospi- I don't know if that's even hospi- that, that, that's just rude. Even though that they, they think that, that, that those fans are rude to them, but doing that is pretty much more rude. Everyone has a right to an opinion, even myself. So, so for them to do that, I've lost a whole lot of respect for them. I don't know if they even care to even listen to Valley of Tears album, which is supposed to be released uh, somewhere this year. Honestly, that album is, is going to leave a Valley of Tears behind. It's, it's sad. It's really sad that, that, that two, two gifted guitar players have, have soon took upon themselves to or were influenced by this whole rock star uh, pampered mentality thing that, that, that they have have to it's, honestly um, I don't know so what else is going on in that Elgie Ward uh, camp I know this year he's now now going to mark his territory. This time, releasing a um, sort of a side. Uh, I guess you could say a little bit of a super group because it's a collaboration with him and ex Warfare drummer uh, Evo. Now, even when I think that, uh, everyone knows that Al Gore had produced Warfare's first album, Pure Filth, and that even uh, then later on Evo asked him to do guitar to play guitar on the uh, last Warfare album, Hammerhar. And so, and then they were then, again, uh, later appeared in another band by the name of Warhead, so I guess the, there was a relationship between the, you know, a partnership. So, I guess there's more kinship between them than, than there is between uh, Cliff Hover and Mick Tucker now. And g g given the whole, what's going on, it's, it's honestly, I've, I've just, I just lost a lot of respect, so I don't know if I ever want to check out Valley of Tears, cause I, I. So what's le else uh, left to say? Honestly, in last words, Cliff Tucker, I mean Cliff Evans, Mick Tucker, practically, uh, I think you guys morphed the two together. I think you guys probably should, should have talked this uh, with Algie Ward in 2007. You should have spoke to him. It wasn't your, your decision to, uh, to take off Algie Ward. And the reason they, had take, they, they decided to do this was because of Algie Ward had health issues. Which, the reason why he hasn't been playing live, it has to something to do with uh, he can't take so, uh, not, not so much loud music, so... I don't, it's, it's kind of off, but, a little odd, but, they should, should have spoke to him, it wasn't, there wasn't, it wasn't their decision to go on without him, and, and I can understand uh, where Algie Ward's coming from, they don't, he, they, and he has every right to be pissed, and they should, should have, and they should understand why he's pissed, but yet that they try to act so oblivious to this that thinking that they didn't do anything wrong. Bullshit. You you too should have not done this. It wasn't your right, it wasn't your decision to make by yourselves. So in words, you should have changed your band name to something else with instead of using the name Tank. That's pretty much what I have have um, have what I got to say. That's all. So this is me, the Heavy Thrashhead, out.